This review looks at a Volvo FH4 tractor and it's coupled with a Notabome 4 axle semi trailer. It's in the colours of Ruttall Plant Hire, which is a company based in Northern England. It has been commissioned from WSI by Maguire's Models and is a collector card in the box. It is numbered and it confirms that only 155 have been made. The box is factory sealed, so after you cut the tape and lift the lid, you can lift out the parts. In addition to the tractor, there seems to be a couple of loose parts, there's also a trailer and a number of bags of small parts. The loose parts seem to be wedges which go between the wheel arches, and it's not really clear why they're not being glued onto the model. We will do just a little bit of assembly to get the model into road going formation, and that includes adding a toolbox onto the gooseneck. And then we can complete the gooseneck by adding the various side panels. These are metal parts and they are a good fit, so they require some effort from a stronger fellow to get the parts in. But that does mean they stay in place well. The Volvo is a 6x2 layout and it's got typically good detail underneath. And the transmission, suspension and tyres all look good. The modelling of the cab is very good and it's got right hand drive like the real truck. And the Volvo grille and lights look convincing. The best point about this truck though is the Ruttle plant colour scheme which is very attractive. Behind the cab there's a nice fuel tank and exhaust, there's a textured walkway and coiled lines. Looking underneath the trailer it's very detailed with lots of hoses and cables. That high standard continues on the gooseneck which has lots of tiny graphics on it. The deck surface is of a high standard but it's not quite as good as earlier versions of the model because they used to model the offset aluminium strip of the real trailer. At the rear the ramps are very good. You can see the bolt holes in the replica timbers. There's nice chains on the ramps and there's a realistic number plate. It's out onto the Cranes Etc motorway with the Volvo FH4 and it seems to be a little bit reluctant to roll smoothly. So let's pick it up and see what's what and for some reason the rear axle is very stiff on the review model. One thing that's not too bad though is the steering on the Volvo and it can at least achieve a moderate angle so it will display well. And if we test it out it rolls in a gentle curve too. The other feature the Volvo has is the expected tilting cab. It tilts to a good angle, maintains the pose and there's a decent engine underneath. The trailer is highly featured and the first thing to notice is that it rolls well and has very good suspension on all of the axles. They are all independently sprung and the other good feature is that the rear two axles are linked and have steering. Staying underneath there are some pull down stabilizers at the back and they're used when loading the trailer over the ramps. And towards the front there are some landing legs which just unscrew and they provide solid support when the trailer is not connected to a tractor. The deck width can be increased by adding timbers, and although they are in different lengths they are individually numbered so you know which order to install them in. To fix them there are tiny pull out extension beams which pull out from the edge of the deck, and then you can carefully place on the timbers to span between the beams. It works but it is quite fiddly so they're easy to dislodge. Another feature is you can add some plastic ramps, and there are also pull out width markers underneath the gooseneck. There are width markers to fit at the rear as well and those you have to push into place. Another option if you want it is to fit deck posts, but unfortunately the problem with them is they don't all fit well into the holes they were designed for. That means it can be quite difficult to get them to stand up straight, and it would probably make a great party game to get the deck posts in and get them to stand up straight. And of course the penalty for not getting the deck post in is that you have to stick it in somewhere where you'd really rather not. Anyway moving on to a feature that does work well, and that is that the deck trailer is extendable, and it significantly increases the length of the model. Another nice touch is that there is a sliding cross beam, and that can be positioned anywhere along the extended spine beam. At the rear of the trailer there are some folding ramps and they're chained into position, and when you unhook the chains you can fold the ramps down into a loading position. This works very well and also gives you additional posing possibilities. So let's now have a quick genuine imitation real life test. Here we've got a JCB load all, and it's easily able to drive up the ramps and get itself onto the trailer deck. Now let's take a look and see how big the extended model is, and in overall length it's about 18 inches or 45 centimeters.
This is a very good looking model from WSI and the Ruttle Plant Hire colour scheme is very attractive. The trailer was released about 5 years ago and has been made in many different colour schemes. But in this version only 155 have been made so it's very collectible. And the model itself is very good so it's highly recommended. Mm -hmm.